Let's look at a few stepwise equilibria and look at manipulations with the equilibrium constants. So here I have nickel hydrate, a complex ion, reacting with ammonia to form a nickel ammonia complex ion. Here's that same hydrate reacting with ethylene diamine, which I've abbreviated EN, to form an ethylene diamine complex. Now both these reactions proceed. Their Ks are bigger than 1. So if I add ammonia to my green solution, I'll get a blue solution of ammonia nickel complex. If I take my green solution of the hydrate and add ethylene diamine, I'll get a purple ethylene diamine complex. The question I have is, what if I have the blue ammonia complex and I add the ethylene diamine? Will I get the ethylene diamine complex, or will this equilibrium favor the ammonia complex? Well, let's look at these equilibrium constants more carefully and see if we can make a determination. So here I've written them out a little more explicitly to help us write equilibrium constants. I have the ammonia as a, as a reactant here now, displacing the water. And here the nickel ammonia complex with the ethylene diamine as a reactant, displacing that. This is the K we want to determine. And here's the ethylene diamine displacing the water to form the ethylene diamine complex. So I have a K1 for this reaction, a K2 for this reaction. For this reaction, K3 is actually the product of K1 and K2, because these two reactions are the sum, excuse me, this reaction is the sum of these two. And when you add reactions, you multiply equilibrium constants. And we can prove that. Let's, let's do this even a little more explicitly. We'll show K2 is K3 over K1, or K3 is K1 times K2. We'll write out, we'll take K1 and write that out explicitly. So that'll be the products over the reactants. I'll take the products here and here, add their concentrations in the numerator, and the reactants add those concentrations in the denominator. And then take K2, let's take the product of K1 and K2. So I'll have these products in the numerator, the ethylene diamine complex and the ammonia complex, and these two in the denominator. I'll have the ammonia complex and the ethylene diamine. So that's the product K1 and K2, and we're saying that's K3. So here's K3. This should look like ethylene diamine nickel complex and water in the numerator products over reactants, the nickel hydrate and the ethylene diamine. So let's see if things cancel out here appropriately. We can get rid of the nickel ammonia complex. We can get rid of the ammonia ions. Let's get rid of those and then group everything together. And yeah, indeed, it looks like what we have here is K1 times K2 is K3. So now we're in a position to say, well, what is the reaction K2? How big is K2? We know it's K3 over K1. I can just do the math here. So if K3 is larger than K1, then K2 will be bigger than 1, and I'll go towards the ethylene diamine. If K3 is less than K1, then this K will be less than 1, and I'll stay on the reactant side over here at the ammonia complex. Now, the problem is I've done all these manipulations, but I really have not told you the relative sizes of K1 and K3. So in order to figure this out, we're just going to have to do the experiment. So let's go ahead and do that. I have these down here, and I have the nickel hydrate, two vials, and I have some ammonia here. So here's the nickel hydrate reacting with ammonia. This should give us the blue nickel ammonia complex. And indeed, I've produced my blue nickel ammonia complex. Now here's the nickel hydrate, and I can produce the ethylene diamine complex by adding the ethylene diamine. This should be purple, and indeed, that is. Now the question is, which binds more strongly, the ethylene diamine 
or the ammonia, which of these Ks is larger, K3 or K1? Well, we can figure that out by adding ethylene diamine to the ammonia complex and ammonia to the nickel to the ethylene diamine complex. See which one wins out. So here's ammonia, going to add that to the ethylene diamine complex. Ah, no color change there. So that would say it looks like the nickel or the ethylene diamine is the stronger binder. It looks like this K is going to be bigger than one. It favors the ethylene diamine. Let's prove that. Here is the exact reaction. The nickel ammonia complex in blue adding the ethylene diamine. We expect it now to form the purple ethylene diamine complex. And indeed that's what we see. So what we found here is we can't tell the color unless we do the experiment. It will be this violet color if K3 is bigger. It would be a blue color if K3 was smaller. But what we've shown is K3 is bigger, the ethylene diamine is the stronger binding ligand, and what we have is an analysis of equilibrium constants in multiple equilibria.